Hello! In this quick screencast I want to introduce you to the concept of binding context, which is a concept that relates to knockout. In knockout, a binding context is an object that holds data that you can reference from your bindings. In other words, these are predefined objects that the knockout framework makes available. For example, the parent binding context, the parent binding context, the root binding context, the component binding context, data, index, parent context, raw data, component template nodes, context, element. These are the predefined objects that the knockout framework makes available and to which you can refer and from which you can obtain data and do something with that data in the context of your application. Especially when you're getting started with Knockout, all of this is very confusing. You don't really know which of the binding contexts are available. You don't know how to use them. You don't know what data is found inside of those binding contexts. To give you a case in point, we will look at a very simple example. You see here a code completion box. This code completion box is made possible because HTML5 provides a data list element. In the same way that there's a table element and an input element and a body element, there is now a standard element from HTML called data list. And you can fill that data list element with one or more options. And these are the options that you see in here. Each of these are called options. In this case, we have as many options as there are countries in an observable array that we have bound to the data list. The observable array, of course, comes from Knockout with its data bind syntax. If we look inside of our view model, we can see we have an observable array named countries into which we have pushed multiple instances of country and of states. And of course, at the end, we have here our KO apply bindings. In addition to our country's observable array, we have an observable, which is selected country, so that we can keep track of what the currently selected country is. That selected country is set in the input field that you see here. We expand the data list, and the data list is connected to the input field by means of this list attribute here. The list attribute of the input field connects it to the data list element, which has as its ID country list, which you can see is the value of the list attribute in the input field. So these two are connected together. And we can now select a country. And once we tab out of it, we would expect to see the selected country and the list of states that relate to it. For that, we have a small piece of code that, first of all, is displayed if selected country is not null. So this will all be visible if selected country is not null. And in this case, it's not null. You can see we have selected a country. And at this point, we can see also that we are going to have, if this is not null, we're going to have a label that is connected via the for attribute to the country input, which is the input field. In other words, when one clicks on that label, we will automatically activate the input field, which is kind of useful because we can very quickly get back to our input field by clicking on the label. We also see that we will then display below that label a span that has its text bound to that same selected country that we have set in the input field. In other words, we will automatically see the selected country directly below the data list. But in addition, we also want to see a list of the related states. At the moment, we don't know how to do that. So we've hard coded Netherlands in here. So what we're saying here is in the observable array, which we're going to iterate through via the for each binding from knockout, if the country from that country's observable array matches Netherlands, then, for each of the states within Netherlands, display each of those states. And the data binding context is used here to get the current value of each of the states. 
this if block is completely standard knockout code that we are using here. So here we can have an, an if clause by means of the KO if. And that's how it works. So let's try it out. We save this. We go into our browser. We select something, Afghanistan, we tab out of it. And we can see that directly below we have the in bold. We have the selected country. And below that we have each of the states of the Netherlands. Of course, we don't want that. We want to have each of the states of the selected country. So ideally what we would do is we would say selected country. However, we don't have access to the selected country. In Knockout, we, didn't, we are not in the right context to get hold of the selected country. We are in this context, and we need to go higher up in the context tree to get to the place where we have access to the selected country. And for that reason, we have these binding context objects. The question, however, is which of the binding context objects should you use here? Parent or context or root? And to answer that question, we have the knockout window. So here is the knockout window. And the knockout window will display the binding context of whatever is selected inside of the browser. So let's first make sure that we can display something meaningful, even though it's incorrect at the moment, for the list of states. So we'll select something, Afghanistan, next. OK, so now we're going to analyze this. And to analyze it, we need to make a connection between this knockout window and the browser. We can do that, in my case, because I have installed the Chrome Connector plugin. You can go to the web store, the Chrome web store, and there's a free plugin for NetBeans. Install that into the browser, and then you can click on this blue icon that you will automatically have once the plugin is installed, and you can say inspect a NetBeans mode, and then the two are connected to each other. Or you can right click, and you can say start inspect a NetBeans mode, and what you can also see is that you can press Control shift s so I'm going to do that. I'm inside the browser, I press Control shift s and now as I select items in the browser, I can see the related binding context for what is currently selected in the knockout window. So for example, take note of the data binding context. As I select something different in the list of states, you can see that we have here, by referring to, to the data binding context, we have that value that is currently selected. Also notice that when we click on the data list, we have a different value for the data binding context, because something different is now current. And you can see here the list of countries. So if we want to make use of the data binding context when we are working at this part of our page, when we're working on the data list, then we would make use of this data binding context and we would get hold of the countries. However, down here, so we're actually down here that we want to be uh, working at the moment. When you select one of the states, we can see that, well, the data context isn't relevant right now. Um, parent doesn't give us the selected country. It gives us the hard-coded country. So the, the hard-coded country is provided by the parent of the list item. So here's the list item. And the parent of the list item, which is the unordered list, gives us access to this hard-coded country. However, that's not far enough. We want to go higher up. So we can look in parent context. Will this provide what we need? Doesn't look like it immediately. We need to go down into some deeper nesting. So let's avoid that if possible. And the same is true here. However, on the highest level of the root binding context, we can see we have access to the selected country, which is Afghanistan, which is exactly what we have currently selected. So we can say um, dollar sign root and then dot selected country and include the braces. And then we will have access to this value. So let's actually do that. So we go here. And instead of Netherlands, we put dollar root and then selected country. And note that the braces were included. So we're going to follow exactly the advice that we've been given. And now when we switch out of the connect in NetBeans mode and we type Afghanistan, for example, and we select it, 
we tab out of it. Now we get the states from the country that we have selected. If we go to Namibia, we tab out of it. Now we get the states from Namibia. We would never have known which of the binding contexts to use, nor would we have known that we had to include these braces. We would have been stuck for a very long time looking for the right binding context and including braces, not including braces, and guessing if it wasn't for the fact that we had the knockout window to support us. So we can press Control shift s the knockout window updates with the binding context objects for the currently selected item. And you can see that the knockout window is constantly changing and displaying what is currently relevant. And then we can take a look at what data is made available by the binding context objects for the currently selected item in the browser. And then very quickly work on our code and make a error-free application. That's it. Welcome to the knockout window in NetBeans, which helps you work with the binding context objects, which would otherwise be very tricky to work with when getting started with knockout.